Hey now, so I had a really cool experience on Sunday. I had an opportunity to have dinner with, it was just four of us, and one of those people was Hall of Famer Goose Gossage. Now, Goose is not a rare Hall of Famer at all, and I'll get to why in a little bit. But besides having some, let's say, colorful language, he could not have been any nicer. I spent an hour just talking with him about various things, like the Obviously, he gave up the home run to George Brett, the pine tar home run that everyone's seen, I'm sure. If you haven't, go check it out on YouTube because it's out there to see. But what's interesting about this was the fact that I always heard it was Billy Martin that got the inside tip on the bat was too much pine tar. But according to him, he's like, Frank, listen, shut up. Pardon my language. Fuck up. I'm going to tell you straight from the horse's mouth the story. He goes, Ron Gidry, and he kept going to the story that was Gidry that heard all these rumors. And it started a couple of weeks ago that Brett had too much pine tar on his back. But that was a great story. And we did get talking about his autograph. And I say, Goose, listen, you are a, a, a Hall of Famer 2008, but you have such a great, nice, neat autograph. Like, that's rare. I mean, if you... I didn't talk, but you know, people who watch this have seen like the Frank Thomas autographs, the Biggio autographs, a lot of Hall of Famers of, let's say, since 2000. And again, there are exceptions, but many of them have horrible handwriting. And I asked him about that. And he explained to me that he actually failed first grade. And the, one of the reasons why he failed is he went to a Catholic uh, elementary school and the nuns used to beat his right hand whenever he wrote sloppy. So it taught him to write really neat. So that's why he's got a very, very neat autograph, which you'll see in a moment here. The second thing we talked about, I got Goose's autograph many times. One time in 1994, and right by on the stairs of the uh, dugout at Old Tiger Stadium. And he signed it Rich Gossage, but now he signs it all Goose Gossage. And I asked him why that was. And he explained to me that sometime in the late 90s, one of the T, he was signing autographs, and he, he was just signing Rich Gossage because that was his name. But his teammates said, they're not going to know who Rich Gossage is. You need to sign Goose Gossage. So as mean as he appears with that Fu Manchu, could have been any nicer. And he signed the autograph from that point on, Goose Gossage, regularly. And then finally I said, listen, you're probably one of, if not the most accessible Hall of Famers right now still living to get an autograph. So much so that if you're watching this video at the comment section, Goose gave me his address and he told me that if you write to him at his home address with a nice letter, he will gladly sign one or two for free. Just don't be, as uh, the Jews say, a chazer and ask for a ton of stuff. But yeah, he loves signing autographs. And he said the reason is that when he was coming up in the minor leagues, he was having a bad game. And after the game, a kid or someone was asking for his autograph. So he didn't sign. He was in a bad mood. He goes down to the dugout, and his manager at the time pulls him aside and says, Listen, and he thought Goose said, like, I thought he was going to yell at me about I just gave up the game, and I was fresh, and I wanted to make a good impression. But he goes, No. See that kid that you passed up? Those are the reason why we have a job, and you have to sign autographs. So ever since then, he's taken that to heart, and he loves signing autographs. And he's very good. Like I said, he came in Sunday, and we had a golf out the following Monday. Could not have been any nicer. We have, every year we bring in a Hall of Famer, and we've had many, fortunately, many Hall of Famers here, and he was, if not, the nicest that we have ever brought in. Uh, I was delightfully surprised. He told some great stories, especially about giving up the home run to Kirk Gibson. I actually recorded that. And at the end of this video, if you want to stay tuned after the autograph analysis, you can watch it. It's only about three minutes. I highly recommend it, especially if you're a Tiger fan. Because I've never heard the story straight from Goose's mouth. So with that, let's take a look at the autograph of Richard Goose Gossett. So first we have here is a 1989 National League champion, Saint, sorry, San Francisco Giants ball. A uh, lot of great players on them, uh, but only one Hall of Famer. And that, of course, is Rich Gossage, who signed right here. Now, again, this is signed in 89, so at the time, he was still signing Rich Gossage for the most part. Uh, I told you I got his autograph again in 1994. He was still signing Rich Gossage at the time. Uh, I did not meet him again until the Fan Fest in 2006 in Pittsburgh. He was one of the free autograph signers there again, and there he was signing Goose Gossage now, number 54, uh, one of the numerous numbers he wore during his career. 
And I wasn't planning on getting him again, but when I found out he was coming in, of course, I had dinner with him. Had to bring a baseball right here. And you could see, without even asking, he signed Goose Gossage Hall of Fame 2008. Now, one of the many famous at-bats Goose had was he faced Pete Rose on his final plate appearance and struck him out. So I asked Goose if he would put... Yeah, and he gladly put, I struck Pete Rose out his last at bat. Uh, he said his eyesight's getting a little trouble, so he had trouble with the out. But I thought, that is not an inscription you see every day. So if Pete Rose ever does a card show, just kidding, I may add Pete Rose to this ball, even though I have several Pete Rose autographs. So we took a picture together and printed it out the next day, and I have it right here. It's actually, uh, let me turn the light off here so you can see it better. Here we go. He wrote, To Frank, best wishes, a great baseball fan, nice meeting you and hanging out. He uh, dated it. I didn't ask him to put any of this. I just asked if he would sign the picture. So uh, he couldn't have been any nicer. He gave me some hell about my Sharpie being a little bit flat at the end. He told me to uh, take some money I make and go buy a new Sharpie. Uh, don't worry, Goose, I will. So that is about it. So as you can see, Goose's autograph I'll leave these two right here. He really has not changed much from, again, this was 2006 over here, and this was signed last Sunday. Uh, the G no longer connects to the E, but other than that, everything is pretty much the same. So that's great to see. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, two things. Number one, I'm going to leave his address in the description section of this video. You are free to write him a nice letter and get an autograph from him. Just don't take advantage of the situation. I would hate to see him stop doing that and number two is right after this is a video from the event on monday where he talks about giving up the home run to Gert kibson in the 84 world series so i hope you stick around and enjoy that video and as always keep collecting <laughs> your perspective of it well um it's the game five of the world series uh we're back here in detroit and uh I come out in the dugout. I'll just start from the beginning. I came out in the dugout before the uh, first inning. It was the first inning. I was headed down to the bullpen. And uh, so Lollard, one of our left-handed starters, Gibby's up. And uh, he goes, how'd Gibby do against you? And I, I never said, I'm, I wouldn't even think about saying this. I go, I own him. I couldn't even believe I, I, I still can't believe I said this. I own him. Like, God damn. Let me bring, let me bring that back. <laughs> I didn't mean that. And so now that's the first inning. And we laughed and you know, I have had good success. That's, I had great success against him. So anyway, Fast forward now, eighth inning comes up. I don't even, I haven't even, you know, I have a short memory, so, and I don't want to watch this stuff over and over. So I don't even really remember. It was the eighth inning and Kirk's up, Kirk's up. Well, you know, I, I think it's a tie game or maybe you guys are one down, maybe. One up. It's, a, it's a close game. Anyway, so Gibby's up. Dick Williams, he doesn't know. I've had success against Kurt. And so he, he gives Terry Kennedy, puts it on his chest. Four. TK puts it on his chest protector to me. Four. <laughs> Dick, TK looks over, Dick, Dick goes. <laughs> and that, that would never happen today. Dick Williams would have a chart in front of him. He'd know exactly every bat that you've ever well, faced him. Would have, then he would have left me in. He wouldn't even have given me four. He's going to face him because I had success against him. So anyway, TK looks at me the second time. Goes, four like this. No. <laughs> the next time, four. He did goes, four like this. Same thing. Time out. Dick, here comes Dick. He comes out and he goes, hey, what? He says, you don't want to walk it. I said, no, I said, I've had great success against him. He said, go after him. He doesn't get back to the dugout. <laughs> I don't even know if he's turned around yet. I throw this pitch, 
and Gibby hits it into the upper deck at Tiger State. So I should have walked him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Did you know that Scar Sparky and Gibby had a bet on it? No. Oh. That's the story. Who was the oh, bet? Oh, really? Gibby uh, Sparky says that he, Gibby bet Sparky that he would be able to hit him. 